Can you imagine growing up in a place where your life is completely controlled by the government, where you have to worry about what you eat or what you're gonna have for dinner tonight? That's what happens in North Korea. Today I'll be interviewing Hyun So Lee, who escaped North Korea at the age of 17. Can you tell us your story? My life in North Korea, I thought it was very normal. I was very happy as you guys have, since I didn't know that we were brainwashed or we were living, I mean, we were suffering under the dictators. Because I lived right next to the border with China, and then I feel, you know, Chinese life much looks better than us. So, yeah, that changed me to cross the border into China. So, can you imagine that when you're 17, that I never knew that if I cross the border into China, I will be orphaned suddenly. Because in North Korea, at least I have family who can feed me, but after cross the border, I had to feed myself, I had to survive myself, and I had to escape the Chinese government to, you know, avoid by being repatriated to North Korea. Can you tell me what mm -hmm. an average day would be like in North Korea? For us, as I said, it was very normal. And we just go to school every day. After school, we can't go home. We should gather together in front of a school ground and uh, we had to practice math game. I don't know if, if you know what's math game. In North Korea, every student will have to praise the dear leaders, the dictators. So we have to dance or we have to practice everything for celebrate holidays, so. When were you scared the most? During the famine, I saw people dying on the street. Did you see anybody dying on the street? You never saw that, right? Mm -hmm. Just, you maybe only saw from the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Me too. I mean, until that, until 17, I only saw through the movie or maybe from the book. I saw many people die on the street for starvation. What was the first thing you did when you was free? When you knew that there was nothing holding you back, what did you do? I ate a lot of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> because um, in North Korea, living in North Korea, we don't have that many products. It's pretty limited items we have. Just I saw in China a lot of ice cream, just tons of ice cream. The moment I ate the ice cream, the very first ice cream I ate, I couldn't, still I can't erase from my memory because the taste is so delicious. And I ate tons of, too much. Was there anything happy? Happy? Yeah. Once, when I was 17, after I escaped the country, after I suddenly became orphan in this world, and I realized actually the moment when I was uh, spending time with my family, it was uh, the most happy moment. Do you have any friends in North Korea? Everybody. I mean, until 17 years, um, I have every friend, or you know, my childhood memories, everything is, uh, remains there. Are you allowed to send them letters to sort of contact them? <laughs> talk to them or not? <laughs> you know, that's not a normal country, as I yeah. said, you know. There's no letters can go in, you know. Nothing. There's no way to communicate or contact with the family members inside North Korea. How can kids or children like my age help with what's going on? Is there anything we can do? Just spreading these issues, you know? Tell your friends, tell your friends of friends, you know, just about those situations. Why, I mean, this beautiful world you are living, you know, but just to let them know on the other side, of this world, what's happening right now, you know? There's uh, many tragedies happening. It's uh, very helpful, it's just spreading words, raising awareness, so tweeting, you know, Facebook, whatever. That's very helpful. Thank you for answering my questions. It's been really nice to meet you. Me too. <laughs>